I am a complete sucker for CCGs like Hearthstone and Magic. With the recent release of Marvel Snap, I decided to make a tutorial for one of my favourite effects in these games, the 3D card. There's a few different flavours for these effects. For example, Marvel Snap uses layered images with a parallax effect. The particular flavour of this effect I'm going to cover in this video is a fake three-dimensional window into the card that still appears flat when you turn it. This is actually pretty easy to pull off in Godot. To do this, we'll make use of my favourite node, the subviewport. Create a box to represent our card, then add a quad, which will be our window into the card. Add a viewport. I'm going to make mine a child of the window, and then set its resolution to the same resolution as our game. Add a child camera to the viewport, and put it in the same position as our screen's main camera. Now, let's create a little scene behind the card's window. Here, I'm just using a few box mesh instances. Now we're ready to create the window effect. What we're going to do here is render what our viewport camera sees onto the window quad we set up earlier using a viewport texture. If we put the window objects to a different render layer, call this layer in our main camera and then set the viewport camera to call everything but that layer, we'll only be able to see the window scene through our quad. If we just apply the viewport texture to our material though, we'll have a problem. One, the image will look washed out and two, the whole screen will be getting drawn to our quad instead of just a section we need. The first problem is easy to fix. There's a flag we can set which will convert the data in the viewport to sRGB, which will fix the contrast issue. The second problem requires us to write a shader. Unfortunately, if we use a shader material, we'll lose our automatic sRGB conversion. Instead of writing that logic ourselves though, here's a little trick we can do. If we set the flag, then go to create a new shader, we have an option to generate it from our spatial shader. This means the code that converts to sRGB will already be there. I'm just going to delete the rest of this as we don't really need it. So here's what the shader looks like with all the unnecessary stuff removed. For render mode we've still got unshaded and shadows disabled. I've set up a sampler 2D to hold our viewport texture. And then here we sample it. This is the sRGB conversion logic that's been generated for us and then we apply it to the albedo. Now let's fix the screen issue. A UV texture coordinate is scaled between 0 and 1, with 0, 0 being the top left, and 1, 1 being the bottom right. So when we use UV to sample our screen texture, we're essentially doing this. Godot makes it very easy to fix this thankfully. Godot supplies us with a built-in variable called screen UV, this is the UV coordinate of our fragment in screen space, allowing us to only render the bit we want. Now when we run, we should have our effect. Although we have our effect working, there are a few issues with it we still need to resolve. The first issue will only be a problem if, in your game, the user will be able to resize the game window. What's going on here? Well, if we activate the remote inspector, we can see our game has two viewports, root and our window viewport. When we resize our game, only the root viewport gets resized. This messes with the screen UV as our shader is running in the root viewport, so the screen UV variable no longer aligns across the two viewports. An easy fix for this is to just update the card window's viewport size to match the size of the game's viewport. Our final issue is, if we create multiple cards and put them over each other, like we're making a hand of cards, the windows will overlap and bleed into each other. This is because all of our window cameras and scenes are set to the same render layer. There are two ways we can fix this. The harder way is to set our cards, windows, scenes and camera to different render layers. If we have complicated window scenes with lots of objects, it could be pretty tedious to do manually, but we can handle it pretty easily with a script. Here I've made a script which has an export variable for us to set up a render mask. Then, on ready, it recursively goes through all of our Windows children and sets the layers up. Be sure to also set the camera's call mask too. Another, somewhat simpler way to do this is to have each of our window viewports have their own world set up. We'll need to reparent our window scene to be under the viewport or we won't be able to see anything anymore. This introduces an issue though. 
viewport inherits from node and doesn't have a transform, so our window scene no longer moves along with our card like a normal parent and child will. To fix this, simply update our scene's position to the window position every frame like so. Here is a comparison of the performance charts for both methods. They're pretty similar, so take your pick on whichever one you prefer. I think that'll do it for this video. I'll leave a link to the GitHub repo in the description below. I recently hit 1k subscribers and I just want to give you all a big thank you for all the love and support you've shown this channel. If you have any ideas for topics you want covered in the future, please leave them in a comment section below and I'll see what I can do. Cheers!